Hey guys, this is Kyle from Vesture. I hope you're having an awesome day today. I definitely am. We caught that long from the basically the daily momentum after we broke some horizontal resistance in a confluence with the escape of a value area. So I'm going to walk you through that trade. For anyone who didn't miss it, I just hope that you're able to learn from this. Um, and also I want to talk about how this formation that we broke caused a strong continuation and we're basically at that target now we have a massive sell wall above us so we might be preparing for a correction but i don't think this correction is going to be too harsh because of the local uh, resistance is going to likely flip and turn to support so i'll walk you through how i'm preparing for the either continuation or the drop and uh yeah i'll walk you through it so let's get into it and i'll see what i'm seeing on my side okay all right cool so yesterday during the live and on the discord we were talking about the $62,000 horizontal level of resistance. And this formed basically from the extreme amount of um, volume that we had here. We built a, there's a giant sell wall that was being built here, trying to prevent the price action from going down. And when we had this giant wick come up, we actually lost a large amount of that sell wall. And the, the wild thing is, was watching the liquidity exit the market during this time. So when we were, building shorts over here right when we had price action built over um create this drop a massive amount of liquidity started around here where people were entering shorts and this this came as a form of stop losses this came as a form of liquidation levels where people were using high leverage and over time as we progressed through here the the liquidity built to over like two billion dollars it was bizarre and that's just on binance alone and we lost, like we saw, like during this little wick price action here, that uh, about $500 million was wiped out from being stopped out or liquidated, um, people exiting their trades basically. And then when we came down through here, all those people basically exited the market here. And there's no sell walls guarding that liquidity anymore. So this, w this became a very, very bullish. And in confluence with that, we broke the horizontal resistance. And in confluence with that, we had the CPI data come out. Um, so that gave us more confidence in the market too. And we bounced off of the daily momentum. So we had a lot of bullish confluence in, in top of our regular rules of just trying to um, know when it's appropriate to trade within a value area or when it's time to uh, prepare for the escape of the value area into the next one. And... So that all, all that really required after we lost the sell wall was a 15 minute candle close above this horizontal level. So we got in, it came back down, acted as a form of support. And from that support bounce, when we created that higher high, we could start drawing broad momentum. So we can track the momentum of the market to tell us when it's appropriate to get out of the market. And then we got another higher high, but this higher high was really aggressive and it broke the neckline of an inverse head and shoulders. And I'll show you really quick how an inverse head and shoulders gives you a measurable target. So when you're seeing price action like this, where you have like this swing low here and then a lower low, and then we're starting to get a higher high, this is this is telling you that there might be a shift in the trend. We don't have, uh, we're building a, you know, a lower high, sorry, or a higher low, a higher low. We're building a higher low. Um, and that what we that kind of gives you a, a, a warning sign that things might start to reverse. And once you break that neckline, you get that break of structure, then you have a measurable target formed from this behavior. And how you can do that is you just look at the the full body candles of the of the time frame that you're looking at. And I use the 15 minute all the time because it has the most participants. And I'll grab a trend line. And I just try to sink it to the full bodies like this. And then this becomes the neckline of the inverse head and shoulders. So what you do is you just grab a trend line from the center point of the price action here to the, the head of the structure. And it looks like a little bit of like a T like this. But all you got to do from here is just click and you drag the trend line to the right shoulder. And you have yourself your measurable target. And you can see there were it came in confluence with local resistance. And there's also a massive sell wall here. So the market makers don't want to continue. So you should start listening. And there's people taking profits from this measurable target. 
Um, so the momentum is going to start to fade here. And what we should prepare for is either A, you should be taking profits at your measurable target because it's just a, obviously is a good healthy habit, <laughs> just taking some off the table, right? And then what you can do is you can anticipate these lower levels to potentially act as a form of support, right? We have the confluence of the momentum here and this local support level here that we built. Uh, so there's going to be demand in this area. And we'll basically box this entire area here based on this little bounce here. There's, you know there's going to be some demand in this zone or some um, people jump trying to get in. And then we have demand here. So I'm going to be anticipating for this to act as a base of a structure. And so we're likely going to trade sideways here and build a potential continuation or a reversal pattern. And what we'll do is we'll look for the break or the change of character that will occur during that moment. Like we don't have a real answer yet. Um, but if we end up having a, a formation built here, we have built some stable support, then we can wait for that support to be broken in confluence with the escape of that value area. And then we can exit our, lo our long position that we're in, with the remaining amount of, of your capital that you might still have in your trade. If you close the full trade, it's completely fine too. Um, but if you're trying to stay in for a potential continuation, this is going to be a really important level for you to watch. And it's confluence with a historical level of support at 64,450. I have mine set to 496, but um, it's only off by a few dollars. Oh, okay, I see why I did that here. I sunk it to, I had it in sync with the previous uh, shoulder here um, because it's going to manipulate the price behavior like it did right here, for example. Anyways, so I'm, I'm going to be waiting for either the break to the upside and I can add to my existing position and what will happen is my average will go from here and I'm going to add enough funds so that my average will be below where I normally would want my stop loss to be. And that way I can have my stop loss at my break even of my existing trade. Um, if we end up breaking to the downside instead, then I'll just get out of that trade and accept the profits that I got and not be too greedy. Um, so that's what I'm preparing for is just a potential continuation here because we had a, a really remarkable balance off the daily momentum. And I also want to talk about the fact that if we stay above 63K for the next three days, let's say 72 hours, there's a strong chance that we're not going to revisit 60K again during this cycle. Uh, I, I know it sounds like a bold statement, but structurally, it makes a lot of sense for us not to visit that area. I don't care what anyone says about the liquidity at 51K, because that liquidity can escape from people taking profits. It's starting to fade. That liquidity is starting to fade from people exiting the market. Um, like This scared a lot of people out. When we came down to this uptrending momentum, a lot of people got scared out, and tons of people got scared out here. So I'm not... I'm not thinking that we're going to come back down to those low levels again. So that's what I'm doing. That's how I'm preparing for that move, that continuation or that potential drop. So I'm hoping that uh, that helped you guys out a lot. Um, but remember, there's, there's nothing ever wrong with taking profits, especially if you're above your one to two risk to reward ratio. And the way things are, how evolved, like past our technical target, we're at a one to eight risk to reward ratio. So we gained eight times more than what we were willing to lose. So we're doing... This was, a, this was a great trade. Um, so I'm hoping that you guys jumped in on that and that you learned from this if you didn't. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So if you guys have any questions, you can reach out to me in the Discord. Have yourself an amazing day. And I appreciate everyone who has been subscribing. Have a great day. Bye. Hey, yo, I'm all about the crypto. In case you don't know, it's the haste to inflation, the craziest sweep on the nation, the baby.